G'day, it's Carl Obst here from the Idea Group in Melbourne. I've been asked to give you a short overview of the System of Environmental Economic Accounting, or the SEER, because that's the focus of this workshop, and it's a few basic things about how it all comes together, which would be useful to underpin the discussion over the next couple of hours. In order to try and give you that summary, and it's really not trying to be particularly technical, I've decided to use this little mixing bowl here, and I'm gonna go through the five key ingredients that make up the SEER to give you a sense of what we're trying to bring together. The first key ingredient is economics. Perhaps not surprising, but in actual fact, it's important that we understand that the SEER is trying to tell a story that, about the relationship between the economy and the environment. And one of the problems in the past has been that the story about that relationship has been lacking detail in terms of the effects that people have, the impacts that people and economic activity has on the environment, and our dependence, our use of uh, the environment, you know, underpinning both economic activity generally and our broader well-being. So we need that economic perspective to give us that richness of, uh, that starting point for the discussion. The second key ingredient is ecology. The reality is we have a wealth of scientific information about biodiversity, about soil, water, the air, uh, all different types of ecosystems, both terrestrial and in the marine environment, not forgetting fresh water and wetlands. There's a whole range of things which are, uh, we have a rich information source on, uh, and we need to bring that into account and bring that into consideration when we're talking about this relationship between the environment and the economy. So they're two, our two key sources of information. But we also need a way in which we can tell the story about those two things together. And that's where the third ingredient, geography, comes into play. If we have that measure, information about geography, we're able to place in context economic and environmental information. Indeed, everything happens somewhere. And it has been a real breakthrough in my own mind, as an economist by training, to see the power of telling a story through a spatially explicit approach to information. Uh, it's not quite there though, because we need a fourth ingredient, and that fourth ingredient is statistics, or more specifically, official statistics. Unbeknownst to a lot of people, perhaps, uh, is a discipline called official statistics, which underpins our measurement of the thing, many measures that we take for granted, like the population of a country, uh, unemployment numbers, GDP, consumer price indexes. All of these things are things for which uh, official statisticians over many years have developed uh, standard definitions, standard concepts, measurement approaches to become the, the way in which that information is collected and collated and informs government decision making, but also a lot of aspects in, the, in private and household decision making as well. So that uh, discipline of official statistics is really a, a really fundamental part of, of taking forward a, a mature discussion about the relationship between the environment and the economy. It's not a situation where we want multiple data sets all competing against each other, telling similar but different stories. Uh, but we need something to bring it all together, to tell the story, and that's where the fifth ingredient of accounting comes into play. So the accounting is a story which is, it actually, in fact, enables a narrative to be told. It tells a story about stocks, how they are composed and how they change over time, stocks and flows. And that richness in an, an accounting narrative is often underappreciated. We take it for granted in the sense that we have these measures of economic activity, which some people understand are based on accounting principles, but really that richness of a, a consistent set of concepts, a consistent set of definitions, some clear measurement boundaries about how we go about telling a comparable and consistent story over time are really part of the richness of, of the accounting language and enables us to describe systems in a somewhat abstract but co comprehensive way. And that's really key to trying to tell this story about the relationship between the environment and the economy. So with all of these things mixed together in my very nice little mixing bowl here, what we've come up with in the SEER is what we call uh, the four box model, depicted here as circles, but having four components being the extent of different assets, the condition of different assets, ecosystem services, and benefits that we derive from ecosystems. Now those four boxes together give us a complete framework for integrating all of this information, doing it in a spaci spatially explicit manner, and telling a, a really rich story about what's, uh, that, that relationship that I've mentioned numerous times now. Uh, the SEER ecosystem accounting uh, was initially developed in 2013. It's been worked on progressively over that time, 
Uh, and in another month, we're, uh, we'll have a discussion at the United Nations Statistical Commission where a decision will be taken on the status of the technical advances that have been made, particularly over the last couple of years, involving numerous experts across all of these disciplines uh, from around the world. Uh, there are a wide array of different projects on ecosystem accounting that have been uh, undertaken over the past 10 years, including in Ireland, where there's quite a lot of work going on and a fantastic program of work in INCASE, which you'll hear much more about in the next hour or so. The final word from me is that the lesson from these ingredients that we're putting together and, and the lesson from developing the SEER over the past 10 years in ecosystem accounting is that no single discipline, no single approach to data is the complete story. We need all of the pictures, uh, all of the pieces to be able to tell a complete and rich story about what's going on and how the things are changing over the time and to give us a common basis, an agreed basis for how we might move forward into the future and make decisions and, uh, and, make decisions and choices. Because ultimately producing a set of accounts is not the end goal. The end goal is to change behaviour, to change choices that are more to lead us to it down a more sustainable path. Thanks very much for the chance for talking to you and best of luck for the rest of the workshop.